One, again, as always, we want to give credit to our, our opponent, uh, NC State. Uh, tough physical game, four quarter game, just like we thought. Uh, Dave yeah, had his team ready to play, and it was the type of game that we needed. You know, I oftentimes talk about this game is no longer the end of our 22 season, but the start of our 23 season. And what a great opportunity against a, a, a ranked opponent. Secondly, I'm immensely proud of uh, this team, man. They have been through so much. And you talk about these seniors that have left us and even some of the guys that have entered the transfer portal. That's the landscape of college football, but I'm really thankful for those guys and, you know, for them to leave the right way. And I know some people have opinions about whether guys should play or don't play. These guys, even if they were graduating, leaving, or going in the portal, the guys that played this game today laid it all on the line for the name on the front of the jersey and really proud of that. Um, I talked about our seniors, but even more so when you saw the passing of the torch from our seniors to the young players that were out there today that made plays, really proud of the way the young players prepared the last three or four weeks. Uh, these guys really put the work in. You know, I thought the schedule of how we had them ready to play in this game uh, really helped them develop. And as you guys can see, the future looks bright. Obviously, we didn't play our best. And I, I know I say that when we win and some people get disappointed, but we still left a lot of meat on the bone out there on offense. The execution wasn't perfect, but we did enough to win. And to me, that's what it's ultimately about. Um, as I said before, this game is the start of the 23 season, and I'm really looking forward to it. You know, the last four years we've talked about taking the next step, taking the next step. Well, the next step for us is to start competing for Big Ten championships. And there's some people out there that will laugh at us and they think it's funny, but you take a turf for granted, I promise you, we'll make you pay. And I'm excited for what the future looks like. Uh, I can't thank my bosses enough, Colleen and Damon, for the resources they provide. Uh, President Pines for all the work that he's uh continue to do to help support this football program and you know what a great way to start the 23 season so with that I'll open it up to uh, any questions. First first. Well coach uh, you told me the other day that you wouldn't mind uh, taking a bath out there because it meant winning. Um, That's right. Uh, how was it? What were your thoughts on it? Had a little different smell than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as always a good coach always has a game plan. You know I want to thank Sean Stoner Hopefully that's my NIL deal, noggin ball, so I say it enough times. He'll send our team a bunch of those hats for us winning championships. A former Turk developed the hat, gave me a little bit of cover. Um, but no, you know, to be able to have that done because you won, as I told our team, sometimes you got to sacrifice yourself for the good of the team, and that's what it was all about. And we got $10,000 uh, out of it for whatever foundations we want to uh, put it to. So we thank, I want to thank Duke Mayo for that. Second round. Mike, with, with all the offensive firepower in the passing game this year, how proud are you with the defense did today in the last two games? Man, those, those dudes played their butts off, man. We we put them in some tough situations today with the short fields, and you know, we oftentimes talk about holding them to field goals, and you know, holding them to field goals saved the day because we weren't as clean as we needed to be on offense, and we had some red zone and goal line opportunities where we just like we were just not clicking on offense. And so, you know what? Some games it turns out the way it did today. Brian Williams, Lance Thompson, Wes Neighbors, James Thomas, uh, Henry Baker, and, and all those guys that work on our defensive side of the ball really did a tremendous job of uh, what our goals are, is to make them kick field goals in, in the red area. And that was the difference in the game for us. Uh, Coach, uh, what was the decision to have Billy start to open Brian before the week in that home break? Well, I mean, as y'all know, man, I, I'm a protective father, so. When we have things that are in-house, we keep them in-house. We've had games where there were other people that haven't started for whatever reason, and y'all don't notice it. But when it's the quarterback, it's a big deal, and it really wasn't. Um, it was a coach's decision. Sometimes you've got to do things to send a message, and, and, and I thought the message was sent, obviously. But, again, there was nothing malice involved in it. It was just a coach's decision to, to start building. Mike, congratulations. Um, can you speak to the play your defensive line, guys like Booker and Fontaine? That seemed to really set the tone for, for the entire contest. Yeah, I mean, Tank Booker, Army Finau, Tank, uh, all those guys, man, it's hard to name them all. But the defensive front seven, you know, we had to stop the run and force them to throw the ball. You know, we didn't get off the field on third down like I would have liked us to, but to just stop the run and keep them in those third long situations is a testament to the big guys up front. Um, Tommy Akin Basote, one of those young guys that took on a more meaningful role today that just continued to show up. You know, for Austin Fontaine, I mean, that's an example of a guy that's in the portal, 
committed to Charlotte and he's playing his butt off with a name on the front of the jersey. And I know a bunch of coaches and I've heard some guys kind of run their mouth about, hey, if you're not in, you're out and all that. Well, you know what? These guys are my family. They finished. They earned the right to be able to make decisions that they need to make like we have as coaches. And I was proud of the way those guys kind of competed and fought. And if I could follow up real quick, you, you talked to Indians uh, earlier in the season about third down and getting out of first and second down and converting those third down. You guys converted it better than a 50% flip today. Uh, and, and speak to your offense about how in those key scenarios they were able to make it. We needed those because our first and second down efficiency wasn't very good. Um, some of it was decision making where we had some, some plays there. A couple times those young receivers had contested catch opportunities. And those are the growing pains that you deal with when you play punch knots and Octavian who made a huge catch in the end zone. But th that's why those guys this offseason, they become the next Dante Demas, Rakim Jarrett, Jacob Copeland. Um, I'm still recruiting Jay Sean Jones. Um, uh, I'm hoping that he decides to come back and add that leadership that we'll need next year for us to take the next step. Back with Hey, Coach Alex, congrats again. Uh, Alex, thanks, bro. You talked about that adversity you guys have overcome the tough times this season, but today seemed like a really special day, officially, you know, overcoming any of those struggles. And see you walk off the field, eight wins, eight wins, huge smile on your face, covered in mayo. I mean, what did this experience today mean to you personally in terms of what you're trying to build? You know, it means a lot to me. You know, one of the things happened yesterday, Coach Friesen sent me a text and he apologized for not being able to be here. He was double booked with the Bobby Dodd uh, Coach of the Year Award, and I know he's dealing with some health stuff. But he sent me a text basically saying, you know what, Mike, I have an opportunity to go win eight. I haven't been able to do that since 2010 when I was there. You get your guys ready to play. He's always coaching. Um, again, one of the mentors for me. He's always coaching me as a head coach. He said, hey, did you call South Carolina about the bowl game? Because they won the game. And he taught me that you called the team that won the game the year before. But obviously, I guess South Carolina and Maryland got some issues. That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> and if we, like I told Damon, just line it up, buddy. Line it up. So I uh, didn't call South Carolina, but we kind of learned that Mayo, the Mayo Bowl people did a tremendous job all week long of uh, putting us in a great situation. Our players had a great experience. and. Uh, I can't be more thrilled for this team. <laughs> Third row. Uh, Dave Doran just talked a lot about how much his kicker meant to his team, to his program. You kind of had a similar experience with Chad Ryan this year. He had a big day. What has he meant to the team this year? Man, that kid, uh, you know, something about, and I told our staff this, there's something about the transfer portal where when you recruit guys that are coming up, you know, he was at Eastern Michigan. Uh, we got some guys that are committed to us coming from some lower level schools. Mm -hmm. Those guys show up with a chip on their shoulder uh, to prove that, hey, maybe I belong playing at this level. And I think Chad is a tremendous example of what that's all about. That if we're going to use the portal. I'm going to build this team with high school players. Let's make no, you know, don't question that part. We're going to build it with high school players. But when we go attract and, and recruit some transfer portal guys, I'm looking for guys coming up rather than a guy that's playing at a Alabama that played 50 plays and disgruntled and wants to come because he ain't get playing time. And so Chad is the perfect example of what a transfer portal player should look like that we recruit at Maryland. And that's what I'm looking for. So if you got any offensive linemen out there that's going in the portal, come see Coach Lops. You can find me. What can y'all say? Come find me. Third row again. Uh, Coach, you talked about the wide receivers, specifically Octavian Smith. Can you evaluate their performance, those young guys in stepping up, and then just that mentality they've taken on these past few weeks and dealing with issues? I thought they were just okay. We did not block the perimeter worth of you know what, I mean, we had space plays and we got guys missing blocks out on the perimeter. But those are the growing pains that when they're, you know, they're lessons. You know, when you lose or you don't execute the way you should, those are the valuable lessons that during the off season, we'll go back and we'll watch the tape, we'll get them coached up. The fact that some of them made plays, you know, we had some contested catches that I thought we had a chance to come down with. Um, but they're going to be better next year because of the amount of snaps they were able to take this year and being thrust into meaningful roles today. And, and that's, the, that's what it's all about as you develop a team. Bill Lauren. Coach, uh, from where you came in and knowing that you're one of the world's greatest Terp fans, it, it must mean a lot to you to actually come back here as a Terp. You got to beat NC State in a real game, a real physical game. What's it mean to you? You've, you've given credit to everybody else here, but what's it mean to you to take it from where you came in to actually get that eighth win? You know what? That was a classic 
old school, old ACC, Maryland, NC State rivalry game. I mean, if you think about those games, and I took part in quite a few of them, that they've always come down to the end. They've never been easy. I even went a little old school Terp script. I got a lot of uh, branding, I'm sure. I'm going to get fined on that. But I wore my Terps vest on purpose because, you know what, it's Terps versus the, versus, uh, the Wolfpack, man. And I grew up on that game. I grew up on those games. It ain't never about me. Excuse my grammar. It ain't ever about me. It's always about the players in the locker room. It's about the past players that I've had the privilege to coach here. It's about developing them into men to where they become better fathers down the road, better husbands down the road, uh, better brothers, better uncles. You know, that's what this program is all about, is developing. And the role that coaches had on, on me growing up is why I take this job really seriously, and it's that's something I take for granted. So. It ain't going to be about me. It's going to be about those kids, as, as I've always talked about. And I'm, I'm a product of them. All right. Uh, Coach, how would you summarize these past four years as, as the head coach of the program? When we're starting 2019 to now. And do you feel like you're where you need to be, or you exceeded your expectations at this point? Or yeah, there's, there is no finish line, man. We got a moving finish line, so we're never going to be where we need to be. But I will be remiss if I didn't talk about the, what this program went through with Jordan McNair yeah. and where we are today and some of these seniors that are leaving here were here during that time to think about where the program was today or where it was then to where it is now and it's not about me it's about the resources that Damon and Colleen have provided us uh, it's about the players and, and them in an era where it's all about me NIL individual name image and likeness branding you saw a group of guys that kind of put their personal things aside to, to do something for a greater cause. And where we were when I took over in 2019 to where we are today, I mean, Ray <coughs> Charles can see it. You can ask one of those for questions. Before anybody gets a tour without a drone, does that mean? That right there is a testament to who he is. Here's a guy that has a senior bowl invite, probably somewhere in the second to fourth round draft pick. Cared about his team more than his individual self. And it's not a knock on players that didn't play in this game, because I got respect for them. And everybody has to make whatever decision is best for them. And that's where we are in society. But to see Jacorian, to see Jalen Duncan, who's our highest graded player on our team, that'll have a chance to play on Sunday, Jahari Branch, Spencer Anderson, all those guys come out, compete, play, and finish. And that's what the, one of the pillars of our program is to finish. And we coach it up, whether it's in the classroom, whether it's on the football field. And Jacorian came out and finished. But he also laid the foundation to next year's seniors of what it means, man. Sometimes you, you got to put your, your personal goals aside and realize that this team is why you maybe have the opportunity that you had moving forward. And then one of those young corners, Gavin Gibbs, said what you think? I thought Gavin played well. Um, he's one of those guys that's feisty, plays physical, um, made some plays, broke up some third down passes. You know, he's playing back here at home. You know, we've recruited this area really well. We got some good players signed. It's coming to play for us from down here. And so, you know, any chance to get to play an ACC opponent just because of the old relationships and rivalries part, as I've told Colleen, who does our scheduling uh, with me, those are the type of games we want to play because you know, the great opportunity. I thought Gavin did a, a tremendous job for a young player today. Last question, third row. Piggybacking on being a mentor and helping the kids develop and grow, is there a player or two that you could say, these are the most, uh, these players have really put put it on the line and they would be the most improved players for this year? It'll start with me with Austin Fontaine, man. I can remember from coming here in 2019 and Austin sat in my office with this glassy look you could kind of see his soul and said, I don't want to be here. I want to transfer. I saw him battle through adversity, some personal things that he's had to battle. And every year you just saw Austin get better and better. And then he worked with all the people, you know, the resources I always talk about. I mean, he utilized the resources we've had, earned a degree. Uh, I think he's committed to play here locally at Charlotte. And to me, he's the, 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 the picture if you opened up what the Maryland program is all about and developing the man as a whole, Austin Fontaine would be one of those guys as he leaves our program. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.